everyone, and welcome to the StockSwish.com. I'm going to do an overall market review here at the close. It's after the close here today on Tuesday, June 17th. I'm going to go over the SPY and the Qs. I think the SPY is a driving force here right now in these two markets. SPY is holding extremely bullishly, and uh, the Qs are following suit. Not as strong of a close here in the QQQs today as in the SPY, but I think the SPY is a driver here. And the SPY had more of a lift to get going here to get up over that high than the Q's has, which you can see right in here. High for the Q's will be over 93. Got within 30 cents of that today. And the SPY has to get up here over 196. Got within a dollar of that today. So this, I think the SPY is a driver here. The Q's are just waning. And once the SPY continues to lift, the Q's are going to go with it. And that's how I'm seeing this. Look at the volume in this market here today on a, on a, on a Tuesday in June. You know, that's pretty good. So I had called earlier the targets for both the markets today, and it got to them. Target for the SPY was 195. It hit it. Target for the QQQs was the high of yesterday, which was 92.70 or 93. So it did not get up to 93, but it got up to 92.70. Got up to 92.70. And lo and behold, are you surprised that people tried to short this double top in here again? No, but it's, you know, it's really not a short. <clears throat> and I want to just point out one thing. Adobe is gaffing up tonight. So, you know, the market's going to push higher tomorrow. There's just no doubt about it. And it's higher anyways. But, you know, with the lift of Adobe, it's just going to apply. I think we actually gap up tomorrow morning. So call for the market tomorrow morning. And on the gap, I think we gap up or neutral. Neutral slash bullish in the gap tomorrow or gap up. A small gap down would still be bullish. In fact, I can't think of anything here that would be bearish. <laughs> I can't come up with one scenario that the SPY would be bearish in the gap tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, I could. I could tell you what it would do, but it's not going to happen. So, so basically, that's the end of the story here. Neutral gap in the SPY, the QQQs tomorrow, bullish. Gap up, bullish. Small gap down, bullish. It's just bullish. There's nothing else to say. And, and the market could fly tomorrow. Market could fly. Market could fly tomorrow with Adobe and the nice follow through today and the spy and the close up to the target of 195. And the market could even gap up tomorrow to 196. I mean, that would be a dollar gap up, which isn't that big, but I mean, it, the market could actually be a bullish gap up, continuation gap tomorrow. We'll have to see. We'll have to see what happens here between tonight and tomorrow morning. And I don't know the reports that are coming out tomorrow morning. I didn't check yet. However, right now, as a close of business today, this market closed very bullishly, and people are seeing this now, and they're seeing it. And uh, so the target for the SPY is 200. Could it get there this week? It has to aggressively get over 196 probably by tomorrow for that to happen. Okay, it's $5 away. It's not that big of a deal, but it has to really follow through here now with no hesitation. Is that going to happen? Uh, it could. It could. It could because anything could happen here. All right? And... Anything could happen here in the follow suit of a trend. That's the, that's what I'm trying to say here. Okay, so the target is 200. Whether it gets there this week will depend how we trade tomorrow, because we'd have to follow through on the buy setup trigger and the bullish movement today continuously without any let up. Is that going to happen? I don't know. We really rested in here bullishly as it was a bullish rest for two days. But the follow through did happen convincingly today, and we have to follow through with that. Okay? So, next target though is 196, and we have to get over it, not a retest. I think because this is holding very well, the possibility of getting over it immediately is high. Could we retest the 196 number and not get over it? And then come in and come into a deeper level of support. Yes. Okay. Because this is a very small level of support this is holding here. So we could come up here. Here's the scenarios. Trade up to 196, which we're going to do, and I think we do that this week. Then knock it over, retest it, and come into here. And then still end up getting over the high and going to the target of 200 in like a month or so. Or come up over here, carry through, follow through, get over 196, and just go right to the number to 200. Or... Wait, 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 rest and rest and rest, hold bullishly and take all the rest of this week and not get over the number this week and follow suit the next week, okay, into the end of the month. And those are all the scenarios. But I really have a high level of conviction this gap really here is not going to get broken. I think this gap here may hold their whole year. 
And I really think the SPY is going to go to some crazy number before the end of this year that people aren't going to expect. What is that number? 250. 250. And that will mean one of the most bullish years we've seen here in a long time because the market actually opened. <clears throat> let me find the open. It was like around 180 something. Here. First trading day of the year, right in here, was January 2nd. January 2nd, the first trading day of the year, the market opened at 183.98. Basically, opened at 184 in the SPY, okay? So if the SPY does get to 250 this year, that's a huge rally taking place in the market in one year's time. And many people thought that wasn't going to happen because we sloshed around in January and February and March and didn't really start getting going to April. This is what I find so interesting here. Everybody kept saying, well, we're extended in here. Do you, see, you can see this here now. All of this here was not extended. Look at how we traded in January, in February, in March, in April. We are not extended. This is new buying that took place here in the gap that happened on May 27th that is lifting the market, and it is not turning back. It's new buying coming in. And you can see that every day. When you see the buying coming into the market, you can see it. You can feel it. You can actually feel it. That's how I'm calling the longs that I'm calling. That's how I'm seeing the things I'm calling. I'm seeing the market trade. I'm seeing the buying scoop it up. It's like a shovel. Like a shovel comes in and scoops it. Here, going back to the one-minute chart. This was this morning when I called this long. It was aggressive, but I mean, I, it, was, it was real. I mean, it was, it was right there. It was right in your face, and I just called it. When I call stuff at live time, it's because I'm seeing it happen live. I'm saying, take it, take it. It was being scooped. Market came down, scoop, came down, scoop, came down, scoop, 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 scoop. Okay? Every time the market comes down, guess what? It gets a scoop. So it's like picking it up, picking it up, picking it up, picking it up. It's getting lifted. It's lifting it. Sometimes it lifts it slow, sometimes it lifts it fast, but it's getting a lift, and that means buying. And it's new buying. And it's nice, nice new buying that's happening here very steadily. And everybody in the trading room that took the long in the market this morning actually got paid, went to the target, went to the target. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful trade was more than a dollar from the entry. So actually had risk reward in this. Actually, it was risk reward in the long trade in the market today if you held all day to the target. Really, and it was a nice trade. And you had a place to lower the stop. So the Qs did not uh, get up to 93 today. But again, you know, the SPY didn't get up over the high today either. So there's a lot of different scenarios that could take place here. The most likely high odds, though, is for the follow-through to happen here this week. Whether or not we do the retest and then come in or get over it remains to be seen. But nothing would surprise me, meaning we could just get right on over it because it's new buying. New buying that's here in this market that's coming in. And if you look at this bigger picture, I mean, it's so easy to see this. This is so easy here to see that we're not extended. It's a nice, beautiful... A uh, nice uptrend that's happened all of 2013 into 2014. The market pretty much took a nap from January to April. So I see big numbers here in target, uh, targets for the SPY this year. 250 by the end of the year. 250 by the end of the year there. Just, just put it out there for the SPY. Okay. So people that want to go long, it's not too late. You just have to get in here. And uh, people that keep shorting this are just going to keep getting run over. And they really got run over here anyways. And then pe but people keep trying to do this. And, and, and if this retests, if this retests this and does not get over it there, market's going to get over it, the, over it quickly. Quickly meaning a couple of weeks, not a couple of months, the way this happened here, this transpired that took like two and a half months time. It's not going to be the same setup here. It's not going to be the same thing. Market isn't going to struggle getting over that high. It's either going to do it immediately or it's going to come in, fake like it's going to break and go lower, take a little bit of time, a little bit of time, and then go. Go and run through the people that keep shorting it. So, nice chart, nice bullish chart here. Beautiful, beautiful movement. If anyone's interested in the Golden Gap class, the class is this weekend, June 21st and 22nd. If you want to learn how to trade and learn how to read gaps before the next earnings season. Earnings season starts after the July 4th holiday, and you can learn how to trade gaps and trade all of July and all of August. Busy time to trade what I do which is gaps. And I think it's actually going to be a really busy time in the market period because I see the SPY making that crazy number over 200 in July or August. Like that number will be hit in the summer months, which is going to be something that is going to floor people because it's typically a time not to trade. But if people take the summer off and don't trade, even if people that want to just trade regular strategies or trend trade, they're going to miss the move in the market because it's going to happen. And if it doesn't happen in the next two weeks here in June, it's going to happen in July. Spy will hit 200. 
before July or in July. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun summer here to trade. It's gonna be a great summer to trade. It's gonna be a good summer to make money, which is exactly what we're gonna do here. So have a great evening, everyone. If you're interested in more information, email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. If you like to trade and you like to make money, I would not take this summer off. No matter what you do, long or shorts, you're going to miss a great move here in this in the market. It's going to be astonishing. And then, of course, what's going to happen is that all the more people will come in into the fall. And then, again, that's what I see taking the spy to some really crazy number that will be unexpected, which I see is probably going to be around 250 before the end of the year. So have a great night, everyone. If you're interested in the Golden Gap class, email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.